Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Grek, and on today's episode, to continue the trend of getting us all stoked to get out there and travel, I'm gonna run through my top five highlights or my top five experiences from driving West Africa. And so Africa is obviously enormous and West Africa is very different to Southern or Eastern Africa. If you know someone or if you've gone to Uganda or Tanzania or Kenya, you've been on safari. Those are amazing experiences and I'll probably get to those in a future video. But let me just say, West Africa is something else entirely different, not even on the same planet. And for me, it was the biggest, most outrageous adventure of my entire life. It's something I'll never forget as long as I live. And you can tell already how stoked I am. So in today's video, let's run through the top five experiences that just blew my mind. So when it came to my Africa trip, I spent so many years saving money, dreaming and organizing equipment, mostly for the Jeep, building it out, getting it ready. To be quite honest with you, I didn't do an enormous amount of planning and research. I didn't spend hours and hours reading other people's travel books or watching YouTube videos of other people who'd been there. And so what that meant is when I got there, it was all kind of new and I was seeing it for the first time. And so something that I'll never forget is what it was like the first time I drove into the Sahara Desert. And so you can get into the Sahara in lots of different places. And I went down into Mazuga in southern Morocco. And there's a paved road actually all the way down there. And the paved road basically ends where the sand dunes begin. And it is simply breathtaking to see these sand dunes just stretch off into the distance. And I swapped the Jeep for a camel actually and went out on an overnight trip and stayed out in a tent. And at sunset, I hiked up to the top of the dunes to get some photos. Then I did it again at sunrise. And it still staggers me to this day. When you're standing up there on the biggest dune you can find, all you can see into the distance is endless sand dunes. Hundreds and hundreds of miles of these enormous pristine sand dunes. There's no buildings, there's no roads, there's no infrastructure. It's just the mighty Sahara Desert. And it was one of those times where I pinched myself in my life and I thought, this is something I never dreamed I would see in my life. So there in Morocco, it was amazing. And then as I drove further south through Mauritania, the sand dunes really are like encroaching on the highway. And I have to plow it all the time to get, keep the sand off the road, just to keep it open. And again, these like vast expanses. Sometimes it was like barren, rocky desert. And then other times it would be these enormous sand dunes. And I wild camped out there a bunch of nights, just pulled off the road a couple of hundred meters and you know, tucked behind a sand dune for the night. It was one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen on earth. And it really got, got me stoked and got me in that mindset of like, oh my God, I am really in Africa and I really have this ginormous adventure stretching in front of me. So if you ever get the chance, get to the Sahara Desert, it is absolutely mind-blowing. So as I said, West Africa is very different to East or Southern Africa and vastly different than the Pan American Highway. People always ask me to compare the two and which one did I enjoy and which one's better. And it's really difficult to do that, but I can say they are not similar at all. West Africa is way less developed. It is way more wild. It is way more difficult. It is way harder, more stressful, all of those things. It's like ratcheted up to 11. Whereas the Pan American Highway is maybe a six or a seven. So if you enjoy like a real challenge and a legit expedition, tackle the Pan American Highway, learn your lessons, have your adventures, and then if you want to step it up to the next level, try and tackle West Africa. I do say though, my advice is, I wouldn't want to drive West Africa not having driven through other parts of the world first. I think it's really important to get those lessons under your belt, how to cross the borders, how to deal with bribery, how to apply for visas, dealing with the language barrier, all of that kind of stuff. Like I said, it's ratcheted up to 11 when you're in West Africa. And along that similar line comes my next highlight, which really is kind of the off-roading, the four-wheel driving, just the severe remoteness that you can get yourself in West Africa. 
And I'm not a huge four-wheel drive guy. I don't enjoy driving over the biggest obstacle or through the biggest mud pit. That's not how I spend my weekends. I like exploring remote regions and finding beautiful places. But anyway, when I was in West Africa, time and time again, we're on a major highway and you come across a mud pit where trucks have been stuck in the mud for a week, there's guys unloading them by hand, and you really have no choice but to drive through there. Or you see on a map some like remote national park and I think to myself, all right, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna sort of drive into the heart of Gabon. And then you're on this like four day trip on this like bumpy road and you really have no idea what's around every corner. There isn't a really good map. There aren't, you know, people around that you can ask. You're just on this unknown adventure. Maybe you'll get somewhere and a bridge is washed out. Maybe there's, you know, trees over the road. There's elephants on the side of the road. Yes, I did see them. All of these kinds of things are just like this big unknown adventure of like, I don't even know if I can make it. And that's what makes it exciting. Compared to like when you're in Death Valley or when you're in Moab or even when I'm up in the Yukon or Alaska, you know that those are maintained highways and there it's traffic coming and going, there's other people around. You know that you can make that trip. But imagine doing a trip like that and you actually have no idea what's around the next corner. You're trying to get to some remote border crossing and you don't even know if it's physically possible. Can the vehicle even cross the river that you think is there? Is there a bridge? Nobody really knows. Is the ferry broken down? Who knows, you're just gonna have to get there and find out. And so for me, this like sense of the unknown, this sense of the wild, it really got into me. And there's kind of a saying in Africa of once you've had those kind of experiences and once it's in your blood, basically you're going to be messed up for life because no other adventure you ever have will compare. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you're gonna be longing to go back to Africa and have that wild, raw adventure. And it definitely has been true for me. Southern and Eastern Africa, they're great, I loved them, but they don't hold a candle to the rawness, to the wildness, to the remoteness, and the unknown sense of adventure. The, I don't know what's going to happen when I set out on this, I'm just gonna load up with all the fuel, all the water and all the food I can carry. And I'm going to go and have a legit adventure into the unknown. For me, I feel like I'll be back in West Africa sooner rather than later, just because I want that feeling again, that I actually am on an adventure where anything might happen. And anything usually is something very, very good and amazing and jaw dropping. And every now and again, it's something bad but that's part of the thing. You have to take the bad with the good. So for rawness, for wildness, West Africa might be the best on the entire planet. The third highlight for me is one of those experiences in life where when you're doing it, it's actually really difficult and you know, you're in the trenches and you're laboring. And it's not until you look back in hindsight and you know, maybe you've got your feet up somewhere sitting under an air conditioner with a cold drink in your hand and you remember and you say, wow, that was an experience and like, I'm really glad that I achieved that. And so for me, that is driving across Nigeria. So Nigeria is basically a country continent to itself. It has a population of 200 million people and it is extremely densely packed and it's very, very fast. It's very, very loud. And it is the kind of place where sketchy things happen. People do get held up at gunpoint. It isn't necessarily the safest country in the world. So a lot of people, they just drive across Nigeria as fast as they can. And that's what I did. I drove 12 hour days with my German friends. We were in convoy together and we stayed in a locked compound every night. And it really was kind of, it felt like a mission or a bit like, you know, we had a real purpose every day to just get across. But while we were doing so, we still chatted to the guys on the side of the road. You know, I bought salty snacks. We had to stay in hotels every night. So we were buying meals and drinks. And then eventually too, we ended up staying in the city Calabar to get our visa for Cameroon. And we walked around on foot, we met locals. Then eventually we went up into the mountains and we stayed at this uh, chimpanzee sanctuary. And then we really sank in and we really like relaxed and let our hair down. And the longer I stayed in Nigeria, the more I really kind of enjoyed that like vibrant, fast go mentality of like, go, 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 anything could happen. You're driving along, your eyeballs are about this big, watching out for who knows what's gonna be on the side of the expressways. 
it's one of those places in the world where it's like fast and frantic and loud and in your face. And to me, I don't know that I'll ever go anywhere else in the world that's going to feel the same. That kind of vibe, that like crackling feeling in the air. Nigeria, it's like a different planet. And everything that came before Nigeria was unlike it and everything that came after Nigeria was unlike it. It is its own thing. And for me, in my memory, when I daydream about my adventure in West Africa, Nigeria is a highlight for so many different reasons. As you're moving down the coast of West Africa, it's a bit of a shame, but you learn most of the big wildlife has been hunted to extinction. So it's pretty rare that you can get somewhere that has elephants or lions or giraffes. They're sometimes in game parks. They're sometimes in very, very remote national parks, but they're hard to see. They're pretty rare creatures. What there is though, there's actually an abundance of primates and especially chimpanzees. And a lot of them have been rescued from people who like shot their mother or whatever in the wild or people had them as pets and then they get rescued. And so one place that I went to was the Marienburg Chimpanzee Sanctuary. This is in Cameroon on the banks of this mighty river. And basically these chimps have all been rescued. And so you can go there and interact with them. And when I mean interact, I mean, you can pick them up, carry them around. They climb on you like you're a tree. They come up and like pet your face. They were grooming my beard. And for me, it was the most incredible animal experience of my life. There isn't even a second place. Because for so many months, I'd been experiencing chimpanzees through a cage or, you know, behind a wire fence. And chimpanzees, it's so obvious we share so much DNA with them. Their facial expressions, their personalities, their quirks, they laugh, they smile, they play games. Some of them are jerks. Some of them just lay back on the grass and okay, watch the jerks me. being now jerks. It's so clear that they're like us and you watch how the mothers interact with their babies. And so I'd been watching all of that from, you know, like 10 or 20 feet away behind a wire cage. But then suddenly here in Marienburg, I was in the middle of it. So the chimps would get in a little fight over who got to climb up onto my shoulders. They would run up my shoulders, put their face right next to mine and then put this big toothy grin, pat me on the head very gently and then like run away again or swing through the trees on a branch. And to see them playing and to be part of their playing was so incredible. And the realization too that at any moment, those chimps could have torn my arms off quite easily. They're strong enough to tear me limb from limb and never once did one of them hurt me. They were always so gentle. And even when they wanted my attention or, you know, when I did something maybe they didn't like, they didn't kind of yank my arm or they weren't sort of violent. They would gently pat me, grab my hand and then kind of lead me in the direction they wanted me to go or, or move my leg out of the way so that they could reach under the log and try and dig out a grub or whatever it was. Always gentle, always kind. It was like they totally understood what was happening and the relationship that we had, I mean, it was only a few hours of playing in the jungle, but such an incredible experience to spend time like that with those animals. Get to know them a little bit, play with them, have them hang upside down, you know, carry them all on my shoulders. Again, as long as I live, I'm going to remember that as potentially the best day of my entire life. And then the final highlight for me, as I moved down the west coast of Africa, was one that came really unexpectedly, and it is the country of Angola. And so Angola is super famous around the world. It had the world's longest civil war, and it was super brutal. It still has more landmines than anywhere else on earth. You know, it has all those really bad statistics and connotations. And for years and years, foreigners couldn't get in, or it was super difficult. But that's all changed recently. And I think Angola is one of those places in the world where the people have experienced like the worst of what life can be and they lived it for decades. So now finally they have peace, they have happiness, they want to embrace it and they want to celebrate it. So these are the kinds of people, they'll have a celebration for any reason. They'll invite a foreigner in, give them food, welcome them, show them around just because they're happy, just because they're friendly, just because they're nice people. And so, first of all, the people is what made Angola so incredible. I'd only been there about a week when I already went to the immigration office and extended my visa so I could stay two months instead of just one. I knew it was that amazing. And that was because of the people. But then the more I roamed and the more I explored, 
I just got to these incredibly wild and beautiful places where there are no tourists. So Calendula Falls is an enormous waterfall on the same scale as Victoria Falls or approaching Niagara Falls. And there were no tourists. There were no signs, no fences, no entry fees. You just go there and do whatever you want. Same story when you go to Piedras Negras, these beautiful rock formations where I took this photo, which maybe is my favorite photo from Africa. But I just wild camped right there for free with nobody around. And that kind of experience just kept happening and happening. The capital city, Luanda, turns out it looks more like Miami than Miami does. It blew my mind. Friendly people, really cool experiences. And then down in the south, the Namib Desert is actually mostly in Angola. And so to drive through the desert like that for like a week or more, super remote areas that I really had no idea was like that. And again, the only people we bumped into were these like crazy tribes, people living way out in the middle of nowhere, super, super friendly, super welcoming, always with a smile. And so for me, every time I think back about Angola, everything about the country just like captivates me and has me enthralled and has me wanting more. And I think Angola is an amazing destination because now you can actually get a visa on arrival. So it's not even difficult to get in. And tons of people, they rent vehicles in South Africa or Namibia, which are just south of Angola. And for years and years and years, nobody went into Angola because it was seen as too dangerous. But for me personally, pretty soon I feel like I'll fly to Namibia, I'll rent a four wheel drive, and I'm just gonna zoom straight up into Angola and spend two or three months roaming again because Angola is that incredible. I can't wait to get more of it and have an even better look around all of those wilderness areas. So when you're planning a trip around Africa, even if you're not gonna tackle the whole West, don't leave Angola on, off your list. It is a really, really special place. So I hope that video has been good fun. And I hope once again, that it gets you stoked to get out there and have new adventures. It seems like the world is nearly getting back to normal with COVID. Lots of people are getting the vaccine shot. I heard that all the borders in Central America are going to be open by May 31st. So travel in the world is starting to become actually realistic again. I'm jumping on a plane here in just a couple of days. I cannot wait. The whole new expedition awaits. I'll build a new vehicle and I'll have 12 to 15 to 18 months of massive adventure. Lots and lots of wilderness, lots of remote places, but also lots of like touristy destinations as well. And so it'll be a fun challenge to find the balance between those two. And if you'd like to learn more about my upcoming expedition, all the details are over on Patreon right now. And these people are supporting me over there to get all that behind the scenes information, as well as getting a whole bunch of perks and rewards that are exclusive to those who support me on Patreon. So there's a link down in the description. You can head over and have a look right now. From just $5 a month, you'll get all that info. From $10 a month, you'll also get my GPS track logs and you can have a one-on-one -on -one video call with me to discuss your overland trip or your overland vehicle. Then there's a support tier of $20 a month where you'll be getting my books and I'll send you a Christmas postcard every year and so on and so forth. So that's all over on Patreon. Head over there to have a look. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.